Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well in our last video we showed you how to change the column numbers of your blog here. We did 2, 5, 4 and 3 which was the default. Today we're going to show you how to customize your read more buttons. There's read more buttons there, they work perfectly but you want to make them a little bit more interesting perhaps blend in with your site. So we're going to change them from that to something like this. It looks more like a proper button and it's got a little hover effect and of course it's going to take you to whatever that blog post is. A little bit of coding involved in this today. Don't worry, any code I'll put down below the video. You can cut and paste if you need to. So let's get started. I'm going to undo everything I've done here and we'll start from scratch. Here's the code that I've just written. Let's delete it and we're back to normal. Let's just publish that. Okay, let's go up to the top here. It's always a good idea to give things a title with CSS. Makes things a lot easier to find. So I'm going to give it a title with forward slash star star forward slash. You can write anything you want in between the little stars there. It won't be read as code. So I'll just say read more. I guess we could say buttons. Great. Let's go down. We can start writing some code. Well, I'm using Google Chrome here with the great inspector tools. Most browsers have this today. So I'm going to right click and inspect this element, the actual read more link. And it's brought it up here with Chrome. If you've got elements selected one side, you'll have HTML. If you've got styles on the other side, you'll have CSS over here. So looking down, there's our anchor tag, our read more link right there. If we look at it, it's got a class name. It's got a class name of more link, so we can target it. And they'll all have the same one there. So I'm going to double left click on the more link. I'm going to copy it. It's a class name. All class names have a dot or a period in front. So I'm going to put a dot and then the class name. Let's get rid of this inspector now. If your browser doesn't have an inspector, Google Chrome is a free download. OK, after the class name, let's open and close some curly brackets. And we can start writing some code. I want to give this a background color. I think I want to use my logo colors up here. I've got a free Chrome color picker up here. I'm going to grab this blue and copy it. And let's say background. And I'm going to put in that hex color. All hex colors have to have a hashtag in front. So it's going to be hashtag and then I can paste that code. There it is. And we've got that nice blue background on there now. The actual text itself, I want to be white in color. So I'm just going to say color FFF, which is CSS3 for white. Great, we've got that now. I'm going to give it a bit of padding all around, but that'll make it look a bit more like a button. So I'm going to say padding. First value is top and bottom. So I'm going to say five pixels top and bottom. Second value, 10 pixels left and right, perhaps. Great. Well, that's starting to shape up a bit, but it's too close to the top, or I should say to the bottom of the actual content there. Now, because we're not displaying this as a block at the moment, I can't move that with margin, but I'll show you how to do that later. So what we can do, we can actually inspect the content on top of it. And if I roll over it, it actually highlights it. That's post content inner. So if we want to push that button down, we can grab that class name. Again, just left clicking, control C to copy, drop down a little bit, dot as it's a class name, then the class name. Let's open and close some curly brackets. And we can push it down with a bit of margin bottom. Let's say margin bottom. And let's maybe give it 20 pixels. Obviously, you give yours as many or as few as you like. There we go. That's pushed it down a bit, giving it a bit more breathing space. OK, well, I guess I want that writing to be uppercase. So I'll put a semicolon. Always put a semicolon after a single line of code. If you don't, it won't read the next line that you've put in there. So I'm going to say text transform. And don't forget, all this code will be down below the video if you just want to copy and paste. And we want to make it uppercase, don't we? There we go. That's done that. Fantastic. OK, well, let's give it some little round corners there. I'll use a bit of border radius for that. And let's play, perhaps give it 25 pixels. There we go, we've got nice little round corners there. Well, that's looking pretty good. I quite like that. 
if you want to stop there you can which is great I'm going to give mine a hover effect so it actually changes color when we hover over it and I really would like to push this button in the middle so let's get the hover effect going first I'm going to copy my dot more link up here including the dot right there control C I'm going to drop down just below it right after the K of link there with no gap I'm going to put a colon then no gap again I'm going to write the word hover we can create a hover color for it or a hover effect whatever you want to do so let's copy the original color control C paste it down in between the curly brackets control V and let's find a new color that we want I guess I'll use the other color from my logo get my little color picker out here there we go and we'll just change that color because it's a hex code make sure you've got that little hashtag in front great so when I hover over it's gonna turn light blue great I would like that to be a little bit more graceful I think I can get this inspector out of the way now so to slow it down a bit for a bit of grace I can use a bit of transition duration in the main not in the hover actually in the main because that's where it's tr transitioning from so I'm gonna say transition you can click on the prompts if you need to it'll pop it in there I'm gonna make mine almost three quarters of a second I'm gonna say it's 0.7 of a second obviously again put in what works for you now when we roll over it's a lot more graceful I like that and you can add box shadow borders whatever you want if you want to go crazy with hover effects very easy to do just put whatever you want to happen inside the hover link there okay I'd actually like my button to be in the middle here and if you'd like to do that we just got to do a few other things what I've got to do is tell it to display block so it will say display block and as you can see it's stretched that button the whole of the available width that it's got to take up there which is fine but I want the text to be in the middle of that button so it's say text align center text dash align colon center that's better it's in the middle again for us there and again you can leave this at any stage when you like the look of it just leave it where it is but I think I'm not sure if I want mine to be quite as wide as that so I can shrink it down a little bit and give it a bit of margin either side so if I shrink it down let's give it a width of say 80 percent we'll try 70 percent we'll see if that word breaks let's say width 70 percent and that's 70 percent of the available space there that's okay but of course it's not in the middle size wise it's perfect so let's pop it in the middle we can do that with a bit of margin auto left and right so I'll say margin left dash left colon auto and we'll do exactly the same for the right and that will push it in the middle so it's margin dash right colon auto and as you can see that's popped that back in the middle so that's worked fairly well for me I like the look of that just put a little semicolon on there last one in the line if you forget the semicolon there it won't matter because it closes right there and starts a new one below but it's a good idea to get in the habit of putting a semicolon after every line just in case so I'm happy with that and again like I say I'll push this down the bottom if you want to make this more concise you can actually take that one away now that we've displayed it as block it doesn't matter you can leave it there it's not gonna do it any harm but if you wanted to you could delete that it'll jump up by 20 picks and because we're displaying block on this one you could actually put the margin top 20 pixels and it'll push it back down to where it was that way everything's in the same thing there but just in case you didn't want to do that I'm going to undo that and redo what we had and this is what I'll post down below for you to copy and paste that's just another option to tidy things up so there you go guys let's publish this code and go to live site there's what we had let's refresh now and we've got our new little read more buttons there so there you go guys there's how to customize your blog post read more buttons I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to our YouTube channel 
Don't forget, if you've got any questions, put them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a video. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.